Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our educational series from International Dermatology Education Foundation, where we are committed to medical education in dermatology. So greetings from the side of the border, and tonight we're going to discuss odd therapy for eczema and beyond. Our sponsor for this program tonight is Johnson & Johnson, and I'd like to thank our supporter uh, for this program that made it happen. Now, I'd like to tell you a little bit uh, about, before we begin, uh, some couple of the technical problems to get over with. If you're having technical issues or hearing the webinar, you can listen to the presentation using your telephone. Just select the phone call in the audio pane, and the dial-in information will be displayed. Also, at the end of this webinar, a survey will pop up in your browser and will be emailed to you within one to two days. We would greatly appreciate if you could fill out this very short survey so that we can improve that for the next program. If you're having technical issues or if you'd like to submit a question to our faculty, please submit your question in the questions pane on the right-hand side of your screen. Also, we will have questions and Q&A session at the end of this session. So if you have any questions, you don't have to wait till the end. However, we will answer them at the end. Within one to two days of the webinar, a certificate of attendance will be emailed to you. So again, at the end of this session, we will have a Q&A program. And if you have any questions, uh, please write them on the right hand side on the question pane you don't have to wait till the end so that we can through um we can go through those questions one by one so before we go to our uh, program tonight i'd like to give you a little bit of an overview of our now normal in dermatology education and i think you may have heard this before but now again we're changing hopefully the new normal will be the old normal or the previous normal with the pandemic going away and we are probably decreasing our number of the zoom programs but still tonight we are in zoom i think it makes life a little bit easier for all of us to be at home or to be in our offices and still get that medical education that we need however we are lucky enough that we are also now getting live programs more and more and almost getting back to that previous normal that we were used to it. Now, as you may know, I am the president of the International Dermatology Education Foundation, and we are a nonprofit organization. Our principal mission is to raise awareness and improve dermatology care all over the world through education, especially in underserved areas. A couple of our previous programs, as you can see here, we have worked with multiple different sponsors including CME and non-CME programs. And you can see some of those previous programs that we had both in Canada, but also in US and across the world in Europe and Asia. So tonight we are very lucky to have Dr. John Kraft, who is a dermatologist at Lind Institute for Dermatology and Lindderm Research. Also he's an investigator as a part of the Probity Medical Research. John, thank you so much and welcome. Please go ahead and take the baton from here and tell us about all on the odd therapy and for eczema. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me, Leon, and thanks everybody for taking time out of your schedules to to attend tonight and and learn about oat. It's it's really something that we see uh, we like we use so commonly in in dermatology and and you hear about it so much in just the uh, just just the media and just in the uh, drugstores and and you you often hear about it, but what is the actual benefit like how how helpful is oat for the skin uh, what is the uh, what is the secret to its success why are so many products uh, advertising uh, that they contain oat. What is it about oat that makes it so special and 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 important for for helping the skin? So that's what I'd like to do uh, tonight is to review the uh, basic science behind the oat. What makes the oat particularly unique and helpful for the skin and in skin diseases? Why is why is it beneficial? And also to follow up on the basic science research so that you have an understanding of 
of, of why it why it works is actually see how it works in the in the clinical setting in a number of studies from eczema to xerosis and and others and and I won't tell you what those others are and I'll I'll keep you in suspense un, until we get there and we'll see what other indications we have for the ode and where else it's it's been studied so we'll do this the talk in basically two components where we're going to be looking at at, at the oat and and how it's effective as in terms of its basic science at, at reducing inflammation pH buffering and moisture uh, barrier improvement like why is it effective on those areas and then we'll look at the clinical research highlighting where where it's been studied and how much different the oat is compared to vehicle how it works in other conditions and I think that's that's very useful to to see that transition from basic science to clinical practice and why it's in so many products and and why we recommend it so so often. So here's our first polling question, and all and and you can by all means please please answer this question. Which of the following ingredients do you consider to be the most effective for the treatment of itchy dry skin? Select one of the following: ceramides oats or both are equally effective so i'll let you take put in your putting your answers please and let's see what it showed okay so ceramides apps absolutely so so ceramides are definitely a key important you know a key piece of of, of the epidermis it's certainly very important but ceramides are just one component of the epidermal barrier function they're just providing kind of the uh, the building blocks of 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 the skin barrier function but the the, the this actual epidermis is so much more dynamic than just the ingredient than just that so i look at ceramides like ceramides are an ingredient that's important for for the skin for the epidermis certainly but oats actually do a lot more than just barrier function and building block of of the epidermis and i think you'll see that when you look over the uh, basic basic science so there's certainly a quite a big difference in terms of what they are doing so thank you uh, we will now move on So this are, these are the main key functions of the of the skin barrier, which we all know we have moisture barrier. It protects against uh, oxidative stresses. It protects. It it allows for immune surveillance of things that you you encounter in the environment. So it provides a very important uh, medium between the uh, the in, internal immune system and the external environment. It allows for uh, photo protection. Certainly important to protect against the UV rays from the sun and and protecting against uh, microbes so it has a variety of functions of the uh, of, of the skin barrier all very important and these are the uh, the factors that certainly have a role in influencing skin barrier health so we see that with age it's the reason why we see a lot of atopic dermatitis in young babies because the skin barrier function is not mature it's it's not it's not particularly effective so that's why eczema is so common in infancy and then tends to improve over over time but as you start to get a little bit more wiser over the years over the age of 40 the 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 barrier function of the skin starts to actually decrease and it's why we see patients that come in uh, and then they say they've never had eczema before but now like why now why am i getting eczema now sometimes it's just because they're uh, they're you know a little over over the age of uh, 40 or 50 and that's the skin barrier not a, not acting as efficiently as it once it once acted so that's that concept of this adult onset atopic dermatitis just like how infants can have atopic dermatitis there's genetics that play a role we see filaggrin playing a role in atopic dermatitis and, and ichthyosis that's just one of, of of many there are seasonal variations in the barrier function we see that in the winter oftentimes eczema and xerosis gets a lot worse but i've also seen flares of eczema in the in the areas of excess humidity so in the summertime we can see uh, sun damage can contribute to poor barrier function there are of course external aggressors uh, different uh, different different chemicals you might you might be encountering in, in the workplace for instance you, there might be a variety of uh, comorbidities uh, skin diseases like atopic dermatitis uh, psoriasis, ichthyosis, cirrhosis, all, all kinds, and the anatomic site 
holds uh, flexures, different environment than the palms and soles, which are subject to a lot of uh, irritation. And of course, skincare routine, be it uh, harsh soaps, uh, chemical exposures, uh, people use all kinds of toners, things that all can degrade the barrier function of, of, of the skin, and including medications, gels, lotions, creams, all these can sometimes have a negative impact on, on the skin. That's why it's very important to choose appropriate vehicles for the medications that, that, that you are prescribing. And oats have been around for, for thousands of years, of course. Ancient uh, civilizations harvested and planted oats, and it didn't take long from recognizing their, their use not just as a, a food source, but also people began to experiment with it on, on their skin and found that it had a very uh, way to help improve beauty. Cleopatra famously used uh, oats for, uh, for, for bathing and keeping her skin as, 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 as nice as possible. And even the Romans, they used uh, oats to improve the health of the skin and treat different ailments. But dermatologists, who we think are usually pretty quick on the draw with uh, finding out what's, what's beneficial for the skin, took them a while before the first dermatological studies were done. It wasn't until the 1930s where you started to see some studies of, of, of using the, uh, the oat products. And in 1945, you started to have actually manufactured, ready to use bath preparations, especially coming out of the Mayo Clinic. It starts to become mentioned in medical literature in the 1950s. And it's not till around uh, uh, you know, 40 years later where you start to see that and in, incorporate into different lotions and, and leave on products on the skin. And the FDA in 2003, as well as Health Canada, recognized the, the oat as an ingredient that you're actually able to make claims about its effectiveness in treating eczema and re like relieving symptoms of itch and, and, and erythema. So you, you actually have uh, some science backing the, the the claims that manufacturers put on the product that contains colloidal oatmeal, so you can actually say that it has that it has benefit. So that's that's um, a very very important note for for oatmeal how it is an actual ingredient that has properties that can be effective for the skin. And nowadays today we have numerous products that contain uh, colloidal oat found in um, different uh, different moisturizing lotions, creams, cleansers bath products, all, all kinds, and many different manufacturers now incorporating the oat because we recognize how beneficial it, it, it can be. We know how safe it is too, and it's so safe that it's the US FDA has it as a generally, generally recognized as safe and effective ingredient. It's also in the Health Canada uh, monographs where it actually is there, any product that contains uh, colloidal oatmeal is allowed to claim that it temporarily protects and helps relieve minor skin irritation and itching due to eczema. And these are the components of, of, of the oat. And uh, so, we, so when we talk about the oat, it's not just one thing, remember. So ceramides was just one particular building block, but the oats have myriad effect because this is this is actually like a biological uh, this is a biological product so you have um, you have beta glucans this is the polysaccharide component and this is very retains water uh, excellent water holding of abilities. You have avananthamides and, po and other polyphenols in the oat extract that have very strong antioxidant, anti-inflammatory effect. Then there's oat lipids, which, which help to uh, smooth the, help to smooth the skin, make a protective film over the skin. And there's also components of the lipids that lead to increased ceramide production. We'll get to that. We'll show some basic science about that. And then there's proteins that, uh, that that certainly have the pH that provide the pH buffering, as also the water holding abilities, the humectant abilities of the uh, of, of the oat. And you can see them make and vitamin E is also found in oat that has excellent antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effect. So the majority of the oat is made up of the polysaccharides, and the smaller amount is the proteins and also also lipids. And how do we obtain the, the different uh, components of, of the oat? We have the oat growing in the field, and how do we actually get that into the components that we're actually going to use and, and put in our, our products that we're going to be applying on our skin? So it's quite a elaborate um, uh, work that's done. Oats are very carefully uh, selected, and they are then separated and, and, and cleaned. You have the raw oat grains, 
when when the raw oat grains are you take off the hull that that's where you find the oat oil and so that's the oat oil component of uh, of 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 the oat when the hulls are taken off you're left with just the grains themselves the oat the oat growths just the pure uh, component inside inside the hulls and those are then cut and ground and if you cut and grind that's that's sort of the steel cut oats that you might uh, eat or consume actually on in breakfast cereals and if they're rolled between two uh, two rollers that's how you make the uh, the rolled oats which are quicker to cook because they'll increase surface area but here the the oat groats they're they're cut and they're ground down and they're made into a flour and this oat flour when it's suspended in in in, in an aqueous solution that's the colloidal colloidal oatmeal so it's like oat, oat flour that's suspended is like a colloidal oatmeal and higher concentrations of course being very viscous you can then take the oat flour and you can extract with H2O and alcohol. And this is where you get these water soluble oat extracts, like for instance, like these polyphenolic compounds like avananthamides, for instance, and that's the oat extract. So you have the oat oil, the colloidal oat, and the oat extract. And this, everyone, this is represents the triple oat. So when you hear that expression, triple oat, what are all these, um, what are what what is the components of the triple oat? Well, it's exactly that. It's the oat oil, it's the colloidal oat, the flour, and uh, and the avananthamides. So these these three together would be the triple oat. And if you have the triple, so all three of these, you get you get the lipids, you get the colloidal oat benefits, and you get the anti-inflammatory effect of the avananthamides. So you can clearly have the best effect when all three of them exist in 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 the same product. And the colloidal oatmeal is certainly a very, very important uh, component of, of, of moisturizing as this has uh, an ability to retain water in, in, into the skin. And when it's applied to the skin, it makes a nice occlusive um, water binding solution that makes a protective film that helps to moisturize the stratum corneum. So it helps improve the barrier function of the skin. And this, this makes sense. That when you see in the graph here, you see that the higher concentration of colloidal oatmeal, of course, you're going to be much. It's going to be much more viscous, and you you want a more viscous product because it retains and holds onto the skin better. So you're going to, and the longer it is in contact with the skin, then the more effective the different properties of the of of the oat can can be effective. This is an example here. After this, is an older study from the 1950s. But it didn't need to be repeated because it showed very clearly that when you have a treated a colloidal oat treated skin versus untreated skin and they're exposed to a to a slightly acidic uh, uh, pH, immediately the colloidal oatmeal treated skin gets restored to the pH of healthy skin inside the blue um, the blue margins there. And then in the, in the gray, the untreated control, you can see how it takes two hours or longer for that to start, for that pH of the untreated skin to then return back to normal. So it takes it takes time, the damage has been done. The, um, however, when it's treated with the colloidal oat, you can clearly see how quickly it's just restored right back to its normal pH. So it has immediate buffering effect. It also has more long-term buffering effect that takes several weeks of regular use, and we'll get to that uh, moment momentarily. So you can see that the uh, results, uh, to, uh, definite improvement with the uh, colloidal load compared to the untreated control. This is an interesting basic science study that showed how colloidal oatmeal itself actually had an effect on different components of the skin barrier. So it had components on the uh, on on the on the Claudin genes. So it increased production of Claudin genes, which are important in the tight junctions of the skin. So a barrier enhancement of the skin. It had increased increase uh, production in transglutaminase enzyme, which is important for epidermal differentiation. And it had increased production of genes important for lipid production, such as PPAR, M H HM, GCR, and UGCG. These are all important in lipid synthesis. And all these genes that enhanced barrier function of skin were all upregulated in the presence of colloidal load. So this is truly a dynamic ingredient. 
the whole oat oil. So there. So now we now we take a step back. We're looking at this other component of the triple oat, the oat oil. What is it? What is it doing when it's um, like? Why is why is this helpful for the epidermal barrier function? It's helpful because it contains majority of linoleic acid, and linoleic acid in the oat oil is very effective in reducing transepidermal water loss and helping restore barrier function of of, of the skin. And these these oat lipids. They're, they're, they're essential for many of our membrane components, phospholipids, glycolipids, and steroid, sterols. They're all found in the uh, oat oil. So certainly the oat oil itself is a, a very helpful uh, moisturizer and protectant. But here's a piece of uh, trivia for your next uh, cocktail party you attend, that of all the cereal grains, it's the oats that are thought to have the highest lipid content of all the cereal grains. So that's so in compared to rye and 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 wheat and and other um, and barley, it's the oat that has the highest lipid content. So that's an, another good reason for for choosing the oat as your ingredient in your moisturizing product. So the oat lipids. Uh, so remember we were saying like ceramides, building block. Yes, absolutely, very important for a good moisturizer. However, the oat oil actually acts to increase natural endogenous ceramides. Through, through increased production. So the oat lipids actually stimu stimulate natural ceramide production. And it's it's hard to sometimes get the ratio correct when you're making moisturizers, like which ratio of ceramides is gonna be most effective for improving the skin. You just can't throw ceramides into a product. You have to very carefully think about the ratios. But if you're having the oat lipids actually increase synthesis and producing ceramides naturally, then you can imagine how that might have an even better role than just ceramides alone. So natural production of ceramides with the oat lipids. And it increased the ceramide production by 71% compared to control. So excellent uh, rationale for reason why that's gonna be further improving the barrier function. Now we move beyond the uh, the lipid fraction of the triple oat to the avananthramides. This is the part of the oat extract. And there's these alkal alkaloidal polyphenols. So the poly polyphenolic uh, elements that are very important for their anti-inflammatory action. And this basic science study shows that it's the avananthramide component of the oat that is the most potent at having anti-inflammatory uh, effect by showing erythema reduction compared to the avananthramides compared to the other fractions found in, in the oat. So certainly it's this that is the most uh, potent component of the oat extract as its anti-inflammatory uh, properties. Now let's go to further basic science. And this is interesting because it shows that uh, TNF-alpha TNF -alpha normally causes interleukin-8 production, which is a very inflammatory cytokine. And so in the untreated control, TNF-alpha obviously produces a certain amount of interleukin-8. However, when it's, when it's also with the oily extract, there's a decreased interleukin-8 production. And when there's the phenolic-rich extract, and even more so with the protein-rich extract, there's even further decreases in, in interleukin-8 production. So showing that this oat extract, the avananthramides, have a, has an effect on anti-inflammatory function by decreasing what the uh, TNF, uh, TNF would normally cause inflammation. It decreases that inflammation, so the basic science. Even more so, it also reduces TNF um, activation of NF-kappa B. You can clearly see in the, in the control, uh, compared to the control, the phenolic rich extract as a, as a lower concentration and then a higher concentration further uh, decreases the NF-kappa B promoter activity when it's normally stimulated by TNF-alpha. Um, TNF so more basic science evidence that the oat extract inhibits inflammation mediated through TNF-alpha. Taking a step further, uh, looking at how oats, uh, we have a typically, you know, when we think of uh, skincare, the microbiome, we think about how can we influence the microbiome. We influence it through a probiotic, which is the, kind of the gold standard because you're actually putting live live bacteria into the system, either in the gut or 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 on the skin. It's seldom used on 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 the skin at this stage. Um, but and then there's also postbiotics where you're taking um, fermenting uh, the bacteria and you're you're taking some of their lysates and you're putting that on the skin and thought that that might influence the microbiome. But then we have this this evidence here that suggests that the oat acts as a prebiotic. So it's actually thought to be food 
for the good bacteria in the skin, the normal commensal bacteria, the Staph epidermidis. And we can see that in the, uh, in, in the studies, it's not, it's not important the absolute amount of growth. What's important here is the change in, in, in growth when it's treated with the oat compared to the control. You can see that the Staph, Staph epidermidis uh, the lines uh, separate. So then, the, in the staph epidermidis control on the very bottom, the bottom line, it's it's one rate of growth. But then, when the staph epidermidis is incubated with the colloidal oat, it actually increases the growth of the staph epidermidis. So the rate of growth increases in the prevalence in the presence of 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 oat colloidal oat. Whereas staph aureus, the pathogenic bacteria, when that is incubated with oat uh, compared to the control, makes no difference. So you're not getting any preferential growth of Staph aureus uh, like you are with the Staph epidermidis. So it preferentially increases growth of the Staph epidermidis, and we and you can see that with the um, with in the in the bar graph on the uh, on the right as as well. So it's preferentially favoring the growth of Staph epidermidis. When you do that, you can imagine you're going to be then crowding out the more pathogenic bacteria, the Staph aureus. And also, the Staph epidermidis is going to be producing more lactic acid. So that's what the Staph epidermidis makes. Remember how I was telling you that there was the immediate pH buffering of the oat, but over time, over several weeks, you actually get increased lactic acid production on the skin from healthier Staph epidermidis. And this then contributes to further buffering capacity of the, of the epidermidis I'm sorry, of the epidermis to um, to further improve uh, pH tolerances of, of of the skin. So the short term and the long term, and long term through the action of Staph epidermidis and acting as a prebiotic. So very, very, very good. So let's. I'm just going to go back. See if I can go back to that other slide there. Fair enough. I, okay. Yes. Very good. Very good. This 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 slide here. So let's go forward one here. Yeah. So this um, it, it shows you then that there are going to be immediate actions of the oat, which are the humectant occlusive properties right away, like smoothing over the skin, making a nice barrier function, and also immediately having the pH modulation, which we saw in that basic science study. But then over long term. You're increasing ceramide production through the action of oat oil. You're normalizing the differentiation through the enhancement of the genes of the barrier function of the skin. And you're modulating the pH, the increased lactic acid production by the skin microbiome. So you're doing all these things to enhance barrier production, both in the short term and in the long term, when using the colloidal oat product on a regular basis. Now we move to our poll question. So polling question number two. What fundamental research related to oat resonated with you the most? Select one of the following. Anti-inflammatory or anti-TNF inhibition, pro-ceramide activity, or pH modulation. Take your time, put in your answers, please. And let's see what it showed. Survey says, Anti-inflammatory TNF alpha inhibition comes out on top. Absolutely, because so many of our conditions, like we see so much inflammation that causes itch, that causes redness, that causes barrier function, barrier function disturbance. So we were really looking for things that have these anti-inflammatory properties when treating conditions like eczema, for instance. So that so the fact that there's basic science evidence that suggests a role there is is fantastic. And I'm going to be reviewing next the the clinical data uh, behind. Uh, to see if this basic science data can translate into actually benefit at the bedside. So let us let us see. So we re these are the barrier. These are the oat mechanisms which we've already kind of gone over with the moisture barrier, pH modulation, anti-inflammatory action, antipyretic. So that's interesting. Inhibits neurogenic inflammation. Obviously, we want to help break the scratch it cycle. How it has antioxidant activity with the avenanthamides. Great, and the fact that it acts as a as a prebiotic, which we reviewed. So that summarizes the all the mechanisms, the mechanisms of the mighty oat. And what about the uh, clinical research? So now we're switching gears. We're going to go look to see how it works at the bedside. And there's numerous studies that have been conducted looking at colloidal oatmeal 
in adults with atopic dermatitis, babies and children with atopic dermatitis, patients with uh, xerosis, looking at how adding the O to a vehicle controlled study uh, makes, a, makes a benefit, patients with uh, skin of color who might have uh, genetic reasons for increased transepidermal water loss, looking for products that can be more effective, and uh, patients with dry skin, secondary diabetes. And here's these other things that I was hinting at uh, earlier where oat is also shown to be effective. That's patients with mild psoriasis and patients undergoing oncology treatment. So these are specific populations of, of other skin diseases where oat has been shown to be ineffective in adjunctive skin care. First, this is the, uh, the, the vehicle, uh, vehicle lotion. So a lot of times you, you see studies where you compare a product that contains oat against another product. It doesn't really tell you quite as much as like, what is the oat actually doing? I always like to know like, what is that active ingredient actually doing? And the way to know that is you take a vehicle and you use that on half the patients and then you use it on the other half of the patients with the active ingredient added in. So it's exactly the same except for the addition of the um, of, of the oat. And in this study where you have the active moisturizing lotion, active ML, that contains the colloidal oat compared to the vehicle lotion, which does not contain the colloidal oat, patients that were using the active ML had, had overall greater improvements in uh, dryness and greater improvements in, in scaling and greater patient self-assessments, like better self-assessment with itch intensity, less itch, less duration of itch, and less frequency of itch when the oat was added to the vehicle. And, and, and it, it, so it's really nice, nice to see that you have a, uh, have a product ingredient that really does make a difference uh, clinically. It's, it's, it's good to see that. And these are the, this is the evidence that shows how with the colloidal oatmeal, there was greater improvements in skin hydration, which is measured by corneometry, improvements in the clinical grading score, and certainly improvements in the quite a big difference in participant uh, self-assessment over the course of this, uh, of, of this study. And a lot of times there's products that are very expensive that are available by prescription. It's nice to know like how well does the oat uh, oat contain over the counter product hold up to the uh, leading uh, prescription barrier cream and holds up very well. So you can essentially see the bars are almost identical for a colloidal oatmeal containing compared to a prescription barrier cream in terms of uh, pres improvement in easy scores, which is a measure of improvement in atopic dermatitis, and improvement in itch over the course of this 21-day study, looking identical for the, for the two groups, suggesting that there are le a less expensive over-the-counter alternative can be as good as a prescription barrier cream in helping treat symptoms of atopic dermatitis in, in, in children. This is a larger uh, study where it was looking to see how well the, the colloidal oatmeal containing product would help improve the signs of eczema and quality of life in, in, in patients with, uh, with eczema, two months to 16 years of age, 1,600 uh, patients, where they were given questionnaires to complete at baseline and at weeks uh, four, and, four and eight, amongst other physician assessments, as as well, and we saw that it, the patients that were using the uh, the colloidal lo lotion, there was excellent improvements in the IgA scores at, at both of the at both of the time points, and majority like this is great numbers, 88 percent, 90 percent of patients say they would continue to use a cleanser and cream after the last study visit. So that's a real testament to how much they enjoyed using the product. Because if patients don't like something, they're certainly not going to want to continue using it. Adherence is always a, a challenge, so it's nice to find products that they actually like using. So certainly this colloidal oatmeal wash cream regimen was, was very helpful at reducing the severity of eczema. And you can see in the bar graph how the, uh, the severity scores improved tremendously from baseline to, to week eight with a lot less uh, uh, severe eczema at the, end of the, um, at the end of the study. So very nice, very nice to see that. And another thing is that so many of our, pay, you know, we only have so many resources available. We only have so many office visits during the course of a day that we can see our patients. We can't have people coming in all the time. So we definitely are aiming to reduce the, the number of times patients have to come in to see us. And here's data that suggests that, that when using a, a colloidal oatmeal containing product, there's actually going to be fewer primary care visits and reduced healthcare utilization uh, when they can maintain better control of 
of their eczema. And so they're not having to come in as, as, as often. And certainly you're going to be reducing visits and reducing, um, re reducing costs when you're using the emollient compared to not using an, an emollient. So this is all very good uh, to help improve the uh, outcomes for, for our patients. And definitely the colloidal oatmeal lotion showed that there was decreased primary care visits and reduced healthcare utilization. So that's a real world measure that's, that's practical and that's excellent, excellent to see when using, specifically this was the Aveeno product. So compared to the non-colloidal oatmeal, there was, there was the less, less visits, less um, uh, per visit cost. So great, great to see that. And there's also yeah, associated with fewer primary care visits, healthcare utilization. So it it saves the system, saves the patients uh, money over the over over the long term. Next, we come to the idea that there are differences in the stratum corneum between different uh, different groups of people. So people of uh, African background, Asian background, Euro European background have different uh, makeups of the of of the epidermis. And sometimes in darkly pigmented populations, there's actually uh, more layers in the stratum corneum. There's there's some more sensitivity to pH changes. There's larger melanosomes. And there's increased number of basal melanosomes, as you can as as you can imagine, higher uh, a higher melanin um, content as as well. But it's really these changes, like the sensitivity to pH and increased transepidermal water loss, that is that is that is really important when when trying to treat a dry skin and 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 being a, understanding that there's going to be differences between your patients. So therefore, uh, transepidermal water loss highest in black skin and Asian skin compared to Caucasian skin and decrease uh, water content in black skin, decrease ceramide levels, and, uh, and, and certainly with Asian skin, pretty extensive uh, skin, skin reactivity. So definitely things to, uh, genetic reasons to keep in mind um, when, uh, when counseling uh, and discussing with your patients and appreciating that some patients may need to use more, more moisturizing uh, care than, than, than others. So in patients with uh, with skin of color, this was a particular study that looked at 49 African American children, ages two to 15 years of age, and they had mild to moderate atopic dermatitis, and they were using the colloidal oatmeal product two times a day, or as needed for for three weeks. And you can see how the uh, colloidal uh, oatmeal cream had excellent improvements. Uh, day seven, day 14, day 21, in terms of improvement in Easy Score, and excellent improvements in 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 itch. Uh, that that increases over the three-week study. So this shows that there is effectiveness of the colloidal oatmeal product in patients of um, African American uh, background. So that's great, great to see the evidence for for that. And beyond beyond uh, beyond uh, just uh, uh, atopic dermatitis, we see dry skin in diabetics. Cirrhosis certainly very common. You may all see that in your patients with uh, with uh, renal disease as 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 well. And it can be very common. And so, can you have a oat that improves side effects from diabetes? And I really like like pictures worth a thousand words. This picture definitely says it all. Uh, you can see this uh, really cracked, uh, dried riverbed appearance at baseline, and really smoothing over quite nicely by by week four. And over the four weeks, you can see even from week one to week four, there is improvements in in redness, uh, erythema, fissuring, scaling, and 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 the subjective. Uh, uh, measure of tactile roughness all tended to improve over these four weeks so that's that that's great to see what about psoriasis i mean we certainly talk a lot about uh, topical medicines and therapies for psoriasis but we don't always counsel our patients with psoriasis on on adjunctive skin care so certainly adjunctive skin care helpful for for psoriasis and it's something that we may not always uh, discuss, but here's evidence to show that in patients with mild psoriasis, they actually benefited from a 1% colloidal oatmeal containing lotion used at least once a day over a four week period where there was improvements in dryness, discomfort, uh, itching, desquamation over this one month study of using the colloidal oatmeal product. So definitely something to think about. Can you get your patients with psoriasis even more comfortable? They're often, they're often itchy, they're often in distress. So to add on something in addition to a, a, a topical prescribed medication uh, may be very much appreciated by your, by your patient with psoriasis. And in the, in, in the survey, the 
participants. They were very pleased to be using the product. They found it very suitable for their skin, helped reduce the scaling, made the skin more comfortable. It's just suitable for everyday use. So really no, no surprises here. The patients were, were, were happy. And if we can have happier patients, so we'll all have a more smoothly running uh, office, office day. And now, now here's the next, the next beyond. So we went beyond with the diabetes, went beyond with psoriasis. Let's let's go even further beyond. Let's go look at how patients that are on oncologic therapy, so different cancer therapies, they can have numerous uh, skin complications: papulopustular eruptions, uh, xerosis, cracking, pruritus, uh, erythema, radiation dermatitis. So numerous um, uh, comorbidities can, or more can be associated with oncologic therapy. And is there a role then for using the colloidal oatmeal products in our patients that are on uh, anti-cancer therapies? And I think you'll find there there is, but the way to do that is you have to, you wanna study it. So we had uh, cancer patients ages 18 to 75 with either solid or hematological tumors. They were either undergoing therapy or they completed therapy recently. And uh, they were they had a mild, not 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 severe, but just you know mild grade one to two cirrhosis or pruritus, and they were then um, given a body wash. And this is the uh, actually this is the Aveno RST, the Aveno Restorative Skin Therapy that was studied particularly in these oncology patients. And they were given a body wash that they used uh, daily, a body cream that they used two times a day, and the anti itch balm that they could use as needed for specific areas that were particularly problematic. And different assessments were done during the five weeks of the, uh, of the study. <clears throat> there were subjective measures and there were also some objective measures as, as well. And so these are the uh, dermatology and the patient assessed measures looking at uh, and, and overall tolerance. And you can see how xerosis and in, in at baseline compared to after five weeks, big difference in the uh, in, in the height of the bars. Same with the pruritus. So excellent improvement in the mean scores over the course of the study. Both the dermatologist assessed outcome measures and the patient assessed outcome measures showing the improvement in xerosis and pruritus. So great, great to see that. And quality of life, this is so important for our oncology patients. Is there some evidence that the oat product can actually improve quality of life? And, and there is. So here's evidence that on a symptom scale, emotional scale, functional scale, global skin index scores all improve over the uh, five weeks of the of the trial. So just a simple, simple counseling with your patients with uh, with oncology that are undergoing therapy, uh, you can they can get added benefit, quality of life by a simple intervention like adding on an oat-containing moisturizer that they can use on a regular basis to give them better outcomes. Amazing to see that. And this is the instrumental endpoints where you see corneometry scores uh, improve over the course of the study, so better barrier function of the skin and decreased transepidermal water loss, TWL, over the course of the, of, of the five-week study. So good objective measures. And these are, again, pictures. Great, great to see improvements. So screening and baseline, you see some erythema on the, on the upper back improving over the five-week study. You see some xerosis and, and some dusky erythema that improves at to five weeks in the picture on the, on, on the bottom. So great, great to see that. And so we've now shown that there is clinical evidence that's, that supports our understanding, our basic science studies, that actually does have translation to the real world used in patients with a variety of skin diseases to show how the oat can enhance the barrier function of the skin. It retains water in the skin, protects and restores the skin barrier. So excellent to, to see that. But obviously, if the patient is not using the product, then of course it won't work. So you need adherence, you need cosmetically elegant products that have the right uh, smell, the right texture, that are not messy, don't stain clothes. So you, you want to find the right, um, the right product, a good vehicle to help, uh, to help the product to really shine so people are going to want to be using it regularly. And cosmetic acceptability, really big factor for a lot, of, uh, a lot of moisturizers. So definitely you wanna choose ones that your patients will, will, will like, because that's the best moisturizer, the one your patients will like. And so we've therefore looked at a number of uh, in vitro studies and in vivo studies showing how the, the oat 
this, this kind of triple formulation variety of components can do myriad activities for its anti, uh, antioxidant effect, uh, protective effect, increase in ceramide production, anti-irritant water binding, leading to soothing, moisturizing, protective uh, barrier function of the skin, pH buffering, reducing inflammation, acting as a uh, prebiotic, influencing the microbiome, all giving our patients better outcomes in atopic dermatitis, cirrhosis, patients with skin of color, diabetes, psoriasis, and oncology. So myriad uh, uses uh, for, for the mighty oat. So polling question number three. Has this scientific presentation changed your perception on the skin benefits of oat? Select one of the following. Yes. No, I already knew the benefits of oat. Or no, not yet. And if you say no, not yet, I will be asking you to explain what information you need further. Survey says. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So, yes, 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 definitely. Like there's a lot, a lot of information there, but it just, you know, certainly it really lets you realize that there's a lot to the oat and and we kind of always like knew like like that the ode was doing something but but what exactly is it doing i think to have these kind of basic science uh, studies to, to to get a sense on this is probably just the tip of the iceberg on what the ode is doing but great great to see that there's a basis in um in in in, in scientific uh, studies to show that it, it has excellent rationale and then we see that clinically so it does translate to clinical improvement as as well so that's that's that. I, I will now uh, open up the floor for any uh, any 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 questions that uh, that you may have. But thank you all for your um, your participation tonight. And thank you to uh, Johnson and Johnson for supporting tonight's event. Thank you very much, Dr. Kraft, for that very eye-opening, very comprehensive lecture. So we do have a um, couple of questions, but first let me go through. Uh, actually, why don't we do that? Let's do the questions first. So one is, in your opinion, what really makes oat unique versus the other moisturizers that we recommend? Probably you discussed that, but maybe you can give me an overall summary of of what that might be. Leon, I thought. I think there you have to look at how complex the oat is. It, it's you, we think about some ingredients as just being like a simple building block, like a petrolatum or a ceramides. These are doing something. Uh, urea, you know, these are doing something. They're a humectant. They're a, they're a, they're a barrier. They're they're an occlusive, or or they're a humectant. But the oat, because of its like multi fractions, because of this like triple oat combination where you have like oat lipids. You have the colloidal oat and you have the protein rich extract, so the avananthramides. You're doing many different things with a, with a single ingredient, but it's so much more than that. It's this multi benefits that really contribute to all the things that oat can do. And we saw that in the basic science studies from pH modulation to anti inflammatory effect to, to lipid, lipid improvement, to ceramide production. Uh, and then we saw that that has a role in the clinical uh, studies, all all translating to a product that does really does a lot. So it's right. so that's what makes the oat unique. Then now we have a comment. Congratulations for the very clear and informative presentation. Thank you, Tanya. Uh, also, we have another question which is really important. Could you please explain again the difference between colloidal oat, oat oil? and oat extract and how they are manufactured? Yeah, so very, very good question. So the, the oat oil, that comes from like the husk of, of the oat. The husk is what surrounds the grain. Okay, so that's where you found a lot of the oat oil. And so that is taken, that is, that is purified um, when the husk is removed from the grain. Okay, so then you can then purify the oat, uh, the oat lipids from that. You then have the oat grain, and the oat grain 
it's, it's cleaned, it's purified, so it doesn't degrade. It's quite an elaborate manufacturing process because if you let the oats sit around for too long, free fatty acids will be produced and the oat will go rancid. So it, it actually requires quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of technique. Then that oat is then cut and it's ground. It's ground into a flour. And then that flour just by itself with the suspended oat particle, like the ground as a flour suspended in water, that's the colloidal oat. And that's doing a, a myriad activities and it contains like many of the ingredients except perhaps the lipids. And then if you purify the oat flour, you extract the component that's water soluble with alcohol and water. That's where you get these polyphenolic compounds, the avananthramides that have that very concentrated anti-inflammatory, anti-irritant effect. So that's what a chemist would do. But you could make your own uh, colloidal oat by 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 taking like you know like practically steel cut oats and then grinding those down and making putting it into some kind of like a like a tea bag of some kind and then you could you can suspend that in water sometimes and even make your own colloidal oat or make and a paste. Can I have it for breakfast? <laughs> you would have to cook the um, the steel cut oats, but those are slower to cook than the rolled oats. That's really that. That's really that explains a lot. Thank you. That and that also tells us the complicated, uh, the comp how it gets to the market and how complicated it is to produce. So one other question we have is um, is the oat oil component of the triple oat that increases endogenous ceramide production. Is that what I hear correct? That's the question. Yes, the oat oil, oat oil, colloidal oat. And the oat extract, avananthramide, that's the triple, triple formulation. That's a triple oat. So the oat oil is part of the triple oat. Right. So it, when you look at a Johnson and Johnson product, one of the Avino products, you'll you'll look for that triple oat, and it'll and then you know that it's doing all the things you want the oat to do. Perfect. Um, are oat emollients suitable for my patient with sensitive skin? So we know that Health Canada and FDA recognize the colloidal oat as, as, as safe and, and effective. So we, we don't see uh, a lot of irritation from using, um, using oat, uh, colloidal oat products. So it's actually very well tolerated. In fact, the Avino products, they were designed for patients with very sensitive skin. And we see that in the studies, how much patients enjoy using those products. So in general, they're very well tolerated and people are very pleased to, to use them. Perfect. So yes, yeah, definitely appropriate for sensitive skin. Um, before we go to the last question, Ashley, can you bring up the slides again so that we can go and finish through the slides? So the last question is, John, um, oat, is oat also found in facial products? And what are the some examples? Well, I mean, it, it, it certainly is found in a number of facial products. In particular, you have the Avino uh, Calm and, um, and, and Restore. And this is available as a, as a cleanser, serum, gel moisturizer. And so that is certainly uh, certainly available. And that, that gives you these benefits of the oat, but in a very cosmetically appealing product for the face. So that's just one example. But yes, there are, there are facial products that have colloidal oat. Perfect. I thank you so much for that very comprehensive lecture and uh, thanks again. So I'd like to thank our sponsor one more time, Johnson & Johnson. Also, I'd like to announce for our next program that's going to be done by Dr. Zaki Tahir, uh, who is an a assistant clinical professor at University of Alberta, and he's going to discuss the dynamic skin barrier and why formulation matters. So we're looking forward to that. And please don't forget to register. That's going to be on May 18 again at the same time on Wednesday night, May 18. So again, I thank you very much for your attention and for joining us tonight. Dr. Kraft, thank you very much. And one more time, to, uh, thanks to our sponsor, Johnson & Johnson. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye.